All right, welcome to this lesson. And in this lesson, we will be changing over our authentication manager to be using our database instead of these hard coded values here. So our user will still be using user and password, but they will be coming from the database and not from inside of the memory. So in order to do this, we need to just change this line. So let's remove that line. And now we would do auth dot JDBC authentication. So this is telling Spring that we want to use the database for authentication. And then we would do dot data source. All right. And then we pass in a data source. So this is telling us what telling Spring where to load the data source. And as you can see, I've added this at AutoWire data source. This is getting this data source beam from the Spring container. So this was defined when we made our changes in our application dot properties file, where we put our username, our password, and our U database URL. So that's where this data source gets defined from. So Spring Auto Configuration picks those properties up and configures a data source using those. So that's why we are able to auto wire this because it is injected in the Spring container at runtime. So we're getting that data source and we're using that data source to use JDBC authentication. All right, so once we have this done, then we are good to go pretty much. So, <clears throat> all right. So in order for this to work, we actually have to have a user into in our database. So he has, there has to be a user and that user has to have an authority. So in order to do that, we can either manually go to our database and enter a user from the command line or the way we are going to do it is create a service that allows a user to register themselves with the API so they can have an account so they can log in and be authenticated using this authentication manager all right so for that we will be doing the same thing that we did for um the other models so we will create a user model and an authority model and we will create repositories for those models services for those models and also controllers for those models so let us do that now so let's start with the model we'll create a new class Right, this class will be known as the user model so we'll just type user and create this new class all right we can start off by writing our at entity and also we can write our at table name equals users Java X persistence for each one. All right. Now our users, if we can recall from that table, has three fields. It has a username field. It has a password field. And it has a has an enabled field. All right. So from here, we can go ahead and create our constructor. This class is close to being complete. Now we just have to put at 
ID over this class since this class is not does not have an auto generated ID it's not auto increment we don't have to put that second annotation there we just use at ID so spring knows that this is the ID um, column of the table all right so let's do the same thing for our authorities Go ahead and add our at entity. <clears throat> Let's add our at table with a name of authority. All right. Now, if you can remember, our authorities table had two fields. It had a username field and authority field all right now we need to create our constructor and also we will add an ID on this username now our models are done now we can head to making our repositories so new interface user repository we can add the JPA repository here there it goes because the username is the ID so we use string instead of integer all right so we want to get our user the com ATW Airlines model user not any one of these other ones all right so this is done next we need to create a repository for our authority and also add the JPA repository so let me import all of this Make sure you change the class to interface. I made a mistake. I went to class instead of interface. However, this is what we need. We need public interface authority repository extends JPA repository. All right. So that is all for the repositories. We have completed both of those. Now we need to create a service for the authority as well as the user so let's do that all right this will be user service we're putting this in the service package all right here we give our annotation at service all right 
All right, so once we establish that this is a service, we can go ahead and begin by creating our methods. So what we want to do in this class is just be able to create a new user. So the way we will do this is by reading from the database to see if the user that's trying to be created is already present. So if someone tries to create a user with that has a username that's already in the database, we don't want to create that user because it will just overwrite the old user. So what we want to do is um, not create a user if the username is already in the database. So the way we would do this is by first auto wiring our repositories. So we will auto wire the user repository. And we will also auto wire our authority. repository I'm actually going to change this to shorten it up to repo all right so the reason we're adding both of these in this one service is because we want to save all this at one time so basically we're just going to use this user service since the user repo and the authority repo are being saved pretty much at the same time we're going to use the same service to handle this um actually let's rename this class to make it a little more a little more appropriate so you can update so you can refractor some code by using alt shift r and when you do that it will you'll highlight the current name so once you have it highlighted, you can type whatever you want. We're going to change this to user details service. So to make it a little more appropriate, and then you tap enter and it will refactor. All right. Once that is done refactoring, we have our repositories auto wired. We can begin by creating our create method. So public user create so we will need to pass in the parameter of user and here this is where we would do our check to see if this user that we're trying to create already has a username in the database so the way we do this is by using our user repo to check so what we do is we can say if user repo dot find by ID and then we can pass in the user get username all right so we're getting the the um, user for the username ID now if you recall that this find by ID returns an optional object all right so optional objects have a method in them called is present so is present checks to see if there is a user in this um, optional object so if there is a user in the database with that username then is present will be true if there isn't a user with that username in the database is present will be false so we will call dot is present so now if this returns true then there is a user in the database so what we will do is we will just return no so we won't return anything so if it is not present then we can go ahead and create our user so we would call user repo dot save and for the entity, we will just save the user. All right. So now we have the user saved. But as you can see here, we need to return that user. 
So what I will do is create a user here, call it saved user, and set it equal to that. Now, the reason I did this and didn't immediately return the save is because we still have to add an entry to this authority repository. So we will do that next. So we go auth repo dot save and then we need to pass in a new authority and if we go back to our authority model we'll see what we need to pass in here so let's go back to the authority model our authority model has a username and the authority. So when we do this, we can do actually we need to do user dot get username. And then as for the authority at the moment, we would just do role user. So this will set it as a user role. All right, and to top it all off, we need to return the saved user. All right, and this is our create method. So this will, this method right here will allow us to save a user that we can use to authenticate to call one of the other endpoints. So. I will show you how to do the controller next. All right, so let's go to controller. Do new class. And then call this user controller. All right, and finish. All right, let's begin by adding our annotation for REST controllers. And then we also can add our request mapping annotation. And for this request mapping, we would do slash users. All right. So let's capitalize on it import that and we can move on to actually making our create method so so let's import all of this remember to import the correct user all right so once we have that defined we can go ahead and add our post mapping Import that. Okay. Now we need to auto wire our user detail server. Now make sure you import our user detail service and not the Spring Framework one. So import the service that we just created in our COM ACW airline service package all right once that is imported what we can do is use it to create our new user so what we can do is we return user details service dot create user so this will utilize our user detail service that we just created to create a new user. So now with this complete, we have completed our whole workflow for this. So now when we send to slash users, we need to send a send a user in. So this will be a post mapping. And we would need to have a request body of a user. So with this complete, 
we will be able to do that. All right, so there's one thing left that we have to do. And this is allow this resource to be accessed by anyone. Because if you can't authenticate, then how would you even be able to sign up to authenticate if this if this resource is protected by our authentication? So now we will learn how to allow one of our endpoints to be not authenticated and the rest to be authenticated. So we will need to go back to our web security configuration. In here, we will need to focus on this configure method. So by this authorized request, what we need to do is, I'm going to separate these in this different lines so we can have an easier time seeing what's going on. So we need to add another request authorization, so to speak. So before you do this any request authenticated, we need to add the resources that we want to allow. So the way we do this is by doing dot ant matchers. And then we put in our resource. So our resource is slash users. So we want this slash users resource to be allowed to be reached by anyone. So the way we do that is by doing dot permit all. So the ant matchers allows us to explicitly state which resources we want to allow or disallow depending on what you're trying to do here we're trying to allow so once we establish which resource we need to say what we want it to do and we want to permit all this will allow anybody to make a rest request to this resource and that's what we want because we want people to be able to register and that's how they will register so once we have this done Everything is complete, and we will do a demo in our next one. So thanks for tuning into this lesson, and see you in the next one.